Hi guys, welcome to the Sodcast. I am Wendy Sod. Today I am going to be launching my very first series. It is going to be called Nefarious Nurses. And this is 27 cases I'm going to bring to you of nothing but nurses who lose their damn shit and kill their patients. So disturbing. Um, I hope you guys enjoy a little background here. Um, and if you guys don't already know, um, some of you have heard me mention it. I am a nurse as well. Um, I do not kill my patients. Um, but I do understand the frustration of being a nurse at times. So let's get right into today's case. Episode 1, Niels Hogel. Niels was born December 30th, 1976 and was born and raised in a very small town in West Germany called Wilhelmshaven. And he had, from all accounts, a very normal upbringing, nonviolent, um, had some siblings. He just had an unremarkable upbringing. Was a little bit sheltered, uh, but outside of that, very normal. So, Neil's grandmother and father both were nurses, and so this inspired him to want to become a nurse himself. So in 1997, um, Niels graduated from St. Willie Head Hospital Nursing School, where he continued to work there for the next two years. So nothing too eventful happened during his time at St. Willie Head's Hospital from 97 until 1999. And then in 1999, he took a position with Oldenburg Hospital, where he would work in the cardiac ICU unit called Ward 211. Now, soon after Neil started working here, staff started noticing a large spike in cardiac events, resuscitation events, and deaths. And um, so much so that the lead physician on the ward decided to call a staff meeting and kind of brainstorm about what had been going on and see if they could get to the bottom of what was causing uh, the large number of spikes in death and um, cardiac events. So during this meeting that Niels was present for, he began to panic. He thought that they were on to him. He thought that they knew. So he called off work for the next three weeks, um, giving excuse after excuse. And he thought he would just kind of um, let it play out and see what came of it and see if they really did um, notice what he was doing. So during this time while he was off, the hospital began its own investigation internally and they began to notice that 58% of these events and the deaths were happening when Niels Hogel was on duty. And so they just really um, suspected him, but didn't really have any evidence at the time. So Niels comes back to work after three weeks because um, he hadn't heard anything and he thought, you know, he was just being paranoid. So he comes back to work and they, so they really just kept their eyes on him and kind of watched him closely and it, it seemed that um, the nothing changed. Um, the deaths continued to rise, cardiac events continued to rise. So in September of 2002, the head physician decided to confront Niels and when they did, um, he denied it. Um, just didn't fess up to anything. So at that time, um, the doctor gave him an ultimatum. He said, either you leave this hospital and resign or you transfer off of my unit. And um, they were offering to transfer him to logistics, which would be um, transferring patients from their room to have a CT scan or MRI or have lab work done that type of thing, but he would not have access directly. They gave him a period of three months to decide what he was going to do. And so he thought this through and made the decision that he was going to 
take a position with a different hospital and the director of nursing at Ogensburg gave him a glowing reference letter um, praising his work during his time there and what this tells me is they just wanted him out of there at all costs. Um, they were done dealing with him. They didn't want to have to um, go any further with it. So they really encouraged him to leave and he finally made the decision to. So in December of 2002, Niels took a position with Dolmenhorst Hospital and um, right away the same thing started to happen. They started to notice spike in deaths and resuscitation events. So he continues to work from 2002 until 2005 when, um, although staff was suspicious of him, they just didn't do um, really anything about it. They just kept their distance from him and really kept an eye on him. And in 2005, another nurse co-worker witnessed Niels manipulating an IV uh, pump to administer a medication called Ashmaline improperly. Um, Ashmaline is an antiarrhythmic drug, so um, what it would do is cause uh, contractions in the heart to try to regulate the heartbeat. And when given to someone that didn't need it, it could possibly cause irregular heartbeat leading to cardiac event, um, thus leading to resuscitation or death. Um, so when this was witnessed, it launched a police investigation and an internal investigation. And they did finally arrest Niels. And because the man didn't die, they charged him with attempted manslaughter just for the one case. Um, they're still not linking him to everything yet, um, to any other cases, but they are suspicious. So they link him to this one that was witnessed. He goes to trial and he is sentenced to five and a half years in prison with a five year nursing license suspension. Okay. Why they didn't just revoke him at that time, I don't know. Okay. So. He goes off to prison and the prosecutor um, does not agree with these findings and his sentence. So he appeals it and they take him back to court and he ends up increasing the sentence to seven and a half years and they revoke his nursing license for life. Thank God, finally. So he gets sent off to prison. During this time, they were not done with Niels. Um, they just had this suspicion that he was linked to many, many more cases. So they continued their investigation and they determined that he was linked to, definitively linked to three murders. And so they confronted Niels with this information and their findings and he just, spilled the beans. He confessed to injuring or attacking over 90 patients and he says that 60 of them he was able to resuscitate. 30 of them died from his actions and he said he would um, inject them with this Ashmaline or other medications um, such as insulin so his motive for all of this was um, by his statement um, that he did this out of boredom um, and he did this out of wanting to show off his CPR skills. He was a narcissist. So he was charged with the 30 murders and um, he ended up getting life in prison at that time. Praise the Lord. But they were not done with Niels. No, they were not, not by a long shot. He goes off to prison, again, he's back in there and they continue their investigation. And what they find is just mind blowing, you guys. They go back to the beginning of time with Niels. So back to 1997 when he graduated, they investigated every single facility that he worked at. And they came up with 
right around 200 suspicious deaths. What the fuck? Yes. So they ended up, from those findings, exhuming over 134 of these bodies. The issue with that is this medication would not stay in the system. So they couldn't prove um, a lot of the deaths that they suspected. But they were able to come up with 100 deaths that he was responsible for definitively. And so Niels goes to trial in um, 2018, and he ends up getting um, charged with 85 of the murders found guilty, and 15 of the murders he was acquitted on. So he continued his life sentence for those crimes. But to this day, investigators believe that he was responsible for many, many more, at least the 200 um, that they suspected, if not more. Um, absolutely mind-blowing that he got away with that for so long. And um, just, you know, like I said, I do understand the frustration. Um, you know, sometimes you have really, really bad patients. And they will make your blood boil. But... We are in this field for a reason, um, and to do what he did is just absolutely disgusting to me. Absolutely disgusting. I just cannot fathom it. And when I was um, researching cases, I just could not believe the sheer number of cases that I found where nurses are killing their patients. I mean, they're serial killers. And why it's not talked about more, I don't know. But these cases are just crazy, you guys. So thanks for joining me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this case. And um, there's many more to come, like I said. So join me next week for episode two, Amelia Dyer, another nurse that loses her shit. Bye, guys.